Well, hey crafty friends, happy Sunday to you. Or if you're watching this another day of the week, happy whatever day of the week it is. Welcome to this week's episode of Christ and Crafting. I'm super excited about today because we have a really good topic that is completely, I think, on point with everything going on in the world. And we're gonna be making uh, prayer journals or prayer notebooks, whatever you wanna call them. And we're going to be talking about how prayer plus trust in God equals peace or can equal peace. And I don't know if this is just be, me being way too transparent, but I think the thing I need the most in my whole life now and anytime is peace. Uh, the absence of an internal conflict in me. So I'm gonna be talking to myself about all of this and talking to you, and it should be really good. I hope that it is meaningful and that it blesses you and that it helps you get through this time in the world that we're going through, you know, just a little bit easier. So what we're gonna be using today is some good old Mod Podge. You can use uh, glossy, semi-gloss, matte, there's some that's antique, whatever you have or like. We're going to be using just your basic back-to-school composition kind of a notebook. This one came from Walmart and it was 50 cents, so it's even less than if you bought it at Dollar Tree. We're going to be using some computer paper and I'll show you why in just a minute. We're going to be, for my project, we're using my Webster's third new international dictionary unabridged that I picked up oh gosh for almost nothing at my local Goodwill we're going to be using some pages from here we're going to be using this stencil just the word prayer and a little bit of chalk paste and um, this elastic did I say that already I can't remember oh and a smidge of clear matte sealer so, if you've been crafting very long with DIY Dreaming, chances are you have these things or something similar already in your house, or you can just pop out to Walmart and grab them. So, as you're hopping on, say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. I see that Norma is from Phoenix, but she's in Sedona. That sounds wonderful. Hi, Renee. Uh, let me know if you have any questions along the way. Feel free to sprinkle, 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 especially if you have friends that are, you know, struggling over having peace or anything else and you think this would benefit them. Okay, so we're going to be making prayer journals and I have two ahead of us that I've done different steps. Um, but I want to show you everything. So we're going to start. I'm working off of a Wilton cake board as usual okay and if you're watching on facebook these comments here can be swiped away up or down or side to side with your finger or your mouse or your cursor depending on what device you're watching on and then if you want them back you can swipe them the opposite direction but i know they're in a lot of people's way if you're watching on youtube then good news is you don't have that problem all right so i'm taking a piece of computer paper and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to Mod Podge it to my cover. Why? Because if I don't, then you'll see all this business very clearly through the dictionary paper that we're going to Mod Podge on it. So this is super simple. I'm just going to, I'll show you this one little trick in just a second. We're not covering the spine. And for the purposes of this, um, this Christ and Crafting, I'm not doing the back or the inside, but you can do all of those things too if you want. Okay, so I just took my notebook, I laid it down on a piece of computer paper, and I put this right here on the edge of the paper, okay? Because we're not gonna cover this up. We're gonna leave that plain. So, this is what I have, can you see? And I'm just going to cut it out. It doesn't have to be perfect. So 
So I don't know about you, but personally, I am a big, big, big paper person. Do you like paper? Are you, maybe you're younger than me and more modern than me and you like to do keep track of everything on your device, on your electronic device. I like to make notes. I like to write things down. Sometimes after I've already done them just so I can cross them off. And I just have scraps of paper everywhere in my house with different thoughts. Um, okay, so here's my piece of paper. And now I'm just going to take my Mod Podge. I'm not gonna really shake it up because I don't want it to have a ton of bubbles in it. And, oh, it's a mess. And I'm using a foam, just a basic foam brush, nothing fancy. And we're gonna just cover the front of our cover, of our composition notebook. So you can get these composition notebooks at any office supply store, at Walmart, Target, Staples, Dollar Tree, Dollar General, I mean everywhere. And um, the one thing I will tell you is a lesson that I learned. Sometimes you can find these and they have a very, like a shiny plastic cover instead of this paper. And I did a beautiful project. It was a craft journal. Um, I don't know, it's been a while. Six or eight months ago. And guess what? The whole thing peeled right off. So the Mod Podge does not adhere very well to a plastic cover. So I'm just telling you that so that you can steer clear of those kind of composition notebooks for this project. Okay, there we go. I basically have it covered. I didn't get very much on the edge and we'll clean that up in a bit because it, it, Mod Podge can dry shiny even if it's a matte Mod Podge and then it doesn't look great. Just pulling my paper to where I think it needs to be. Okay, and then get all traces of Mod Podge off of your hands. And you're gonna start in the center and you're just gonna push the paper into the Mod Podge, Mod Podge, sorry going up and down and side to side from the center out. Whoops. Okay, and I'm looking right here and I'm seeing that I don't have anything under there. So I'm gonna lift that little corner up just a little bit and put some. This white paper again is just for the point of making it so that when we, um, when we put our, our paper that is the decoration over the top, it's this dictionary paper, you won't see every detail under the notebook. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that dry. All right, you could do this project um, with some pretty scrapbook paper and you could just call it a day right here if you want. Um, I think I love having notebooks. I love to write things down. Um, so that is an option. Okay, so this is the one that I did beforehand. It's all dry. Set this one right here. And now I'm just going to get a piece of paper out of my book. And I want a page that doesn't have like a bunch of weird stuff like a a chart or an oven <laughs> or a stove or whatever that is on it. I want a piece that's pretty plain, like this piece right here is good. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a um, X-Acto knife and I'm just going to carefully get it out of the book. I thought about using some pretty vintage sheet music that I have but it wasn't big enough. And um, it was going to be a little too busy if I put multiple pieces down. So I opted for just one sheet of this vintage dictionary paper. Okay, so let's 
So, here's our piece. And I'm going to throw this over here. All right. So now we are going to basically center our um, composition notebook in the middle of this. And to do that, I'm going to, and remember, I don't want to cover the black spine. So I'm going to see basically where it would lay. And I want it to be reasonably straight. And I'm going to trace it with the pencil. I can erase whatever marks, if there are any, off. Okay, and then I'm going to where the edge of my, the binding is. It's going to be very hard to see, but I just drew a line right here. So I'll just use my actual notebook to draw a straight line, and that is where I will cut a straight line. Or I could use a ruler, that would be easier. <laughs> That, in fact, would be much easier, and it's more likely to be straight. Okay. All right, so now we just need to cut it out. What is everybody doing today? Is anyone crafting today? What are you making? I would love to know. Um, so let me tell you a little bit what I was thinking about the Christ part of today's Christ and crafting while I'm cutting. So, gosh, I don't know how you feel, but it seems like there's a ton of stuff going on in the world from COVID to have friends that have loved ones that are very sick. I had a family member who was going to be okay, but she was pretty sick. Um, I have a friend whose family member may not make it. So COVID's been terrible. The fact that we're not sure, are we going back into a whole nother season of COVID with this Delta variant? And then, the, of course, there's all the all the stuff going on in the world that just seems so, I don't know. Sometimes it all just seems so pointless. Like, I just don't understand. So these, if these are some things I've been thinking about. And then today, well, there's another big um, named storm heading for Louisiana. And it looks like it could be bad. And I have friends there. The weather, Diana's asking me, where. what's the weather where I am? I'm in Atlanta suburbs. And we're supposed to have some little bit of rain and weather, I think, later Tuesday. But we're good. It's hot. And it's super humid. <laughs> but we're good. So, gosh, it just seems like... There's so much going on, so many terrible things happening amongst all the wonderful things, don't get me wrong. But it's just so hard to understand. Um, and it's so easy to start worrying. And it's so easy to start doubting. What in the world, God, what are you doing? Have you left your throne? Are you, have you stepped away from the job? Do you even care? I mean, I'm not saying that I think these things are true. I'm just saying it's easy to start going down that, that path. Um, so, and I know all of you guys, you have all the same stuff in your life because we're living on this fallen planet in this fallen world. 
right now. And it, it's just hard. So I can start to get kind of worked up. And like I said at the start, I think my biggest life need, for some reason, is peace. Peace within myself. Peace that, I don't know. Peace that everything's okay. So this is what I was thinking about. And I was thinking, you know, I don't know if this is true for you, but it is for me. Sometimes, if I will just write something down, pray about it, and write it down, I can take that weight off my shoulders. And that is helpful. So, yeah, that's what I want to talk about. That's why I want to talk about doing these prayer journals. I have a little bit of pencil on the edge of this. Um, I'm gonna try to really practice what I'm saying today. This is for me, and maybe it's for you also, I don't know. But we'll, we'll talk about, when we get to the Christ part, we're gonna talk about um, how you can have that peace by praying and trusting in God. That can give you maybe not complete peace, but more peace than you had before. Okay, so I'm just gonna take a good brush and it's not good, but it's better than that foam thing. And I'm gonna put some Mod Podge over the top of my paper. This is what we're gonna be putting our pretty paper on. Uh, you don't want it super duper thick because what happens if it's really thick then it's like the, the first layer is gonna start to kind of rise up and have bubbles and want to almost lift off of the composition notebook. Oh my gosh, I have so many notebooks at my house. <laughs> I'm always making them. They're a great gift. And um, this, you know, my investment in this project is around 50 cents plus my time and a few, you know, a few drops of Mod Podge and, you know, a little bit of chalk paste and the use of a stencil. But it's, this is, um, right here. This is a super inexpensive project and it would be a very caring, sweet gift to give someone who might be struggling with the kind of things that I'm talking about. Okay, come on, lay down. Okay, so I'm gonna get the bottom on and then I'm gonna lift this up and I'm gonna kinda of turn it this way so you can see. I'm gonna be pushing it down as I move up. And I can feel a few bumps underneath it. That I think is just a fact. And also I'm noticing that I wasn't going completely straight, but that does not matter. See right here. I got a little bit off, but I don't think you'll notice. And when it's all, all done, I can come back and trim this little bit of overlap off the top. Okay, so there's a couple things you could do right here. You could let it dry for a little bit and put one coat of Mod Podge on the top of it. That will make it so that if you accidentally set a wet glass on it or it gets wet or something, it'll be okay. Um, and then let it dry. And then, before you start the magic, apply one thin coat of this over the top of the Mod Podge. But I'm not gonna take the time to do that right now. I'm just telling you that that would be the next step, okay? Because I think if you just went from here onto the next thing, if you ever set anything wet or get anything wet by it, it, um, it 
it could be a little bit of a mess. And the Mod Podge is like a clear coat. Okay, so I'm gonna set this over here. And um, I'm gonna throw my little Mod Podge brushes in this tub of water over here. And this is the one that I did up to this point before I came live. So you can see that it's got kind of a sheen to it because I put one coat of Mod Podge over the top of the paper. And then I also sprayed it with this. And this just makes it so that when you stencil, you get a little bit crisper impression. Okay, I have never worked with this before. This is Dritz Metallic Elastic. What I really wanted was some of that fold over elastic. It's called FOE. You can get it at fabric stores with cute little prints and things on it. You can order it on Amazon. I went to my Walmart because it's so close. And this was the closest thing they had to it. They had it in this sparkly color. And then they also had some that was black that has little sparkles in it. So we're gonna use this, we're gonna make do with this, but look at Amazon or look at your fabric store for some fold over elastic because what we want is we want to create a loop that is going to hold your notebook shut so you can throw it in your purse and it's not gonna get all the inside, the pages all crinkled up. And I'm gonna show you how you can also make a little holder on this for a pen, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is decide how long do you need it to be. So it's gonna need to be, oh shoot, I forgot my lighter. Hang on, I have to run to the kitchen. I'm so sorry, I'll be right back. Um, you can singe the edges of your elastic just a smidge to make them so that they won't fray. And I'm going to cut this right here and then we're going to have a try. So this is just one of those candle lighting things and I'm just going to pass it through it. use just a little bit more. It gets kind of um, like hard, so it's not going to fray. So let me trim the other end just a smidge and we'll do the same thing. I'm kind of the same way about fire as I am about power tools. <laughs> I'm slightly intrigued and slightly scared. This is not great, I have my fan on above. Okay, we're gonna say that's good enough. Okay, and you could, oh, and I need to do this piece too, I forgot. Um, so we're gonna use this piece also. So let's do that real quick. Let me turn off my fan. Obviously, I don't do this kind of thing very often. It makes me a little nervous. Would not be good if I burned down my house while I was 
presenting Christ and crafting, huh? Okay, I think that's good. You could use one of these kind of lighters too, if you have these for your candles or whatever. Okay, so I'm going to put the place where it is um, glued together on the back. You can also use a sewing machine if you want, but I know most people, a lot of people don't have sewing machines. So we're gonna do it without that. Um, I'm gonna put it kind of in the center. And I wanna show you how you can make a little pocket for your, um, you want this to be kind of snug, for a pin. And I recommend when we get to the part where we're talking about writing things down, um, that maybe you have something like this for your bedroom, uh, or maybe you have something like this for your work, for your you know, main area in your house where you spend a lot of time, that kind of thing. Okay, so I'm gonna glue this on my notebook right here. And I'm just gluing about this much of it. And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other side of it. But before I do that, we want to flip it over and decide where do we want our little spot for our pin to be. I think right here. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to explain this in a way that makes sense. Okay, this is the back side of my elastic and I'm just creating a loop around it. So I'm gonna glue this down right here and I'm gonna use my little finger I do want to get that on pretty secure. It's not going to be glued to the front of the journal because if you do that, then you won't be able to get it open. And I got some pins out. Whoops. I got a little bit of glue on my elastic. I'll have to get my heat gun out melt that and see what I can get off but um, I want to see how tight or not I would want this to be you want it to be pretty tight get just a little teeny bit of stretch so far I know this this part's a little slow I'm working as fast as I can um, okay so this is what it looks like ignore this little spot where I got some glue on it all right that was not supposed to happen but I'm gonna come back on the back and I'm gonna glue part of it to the back and then I'm gonna overlap my pieces and then we'll be able to just pull it off yeah i had all this really fun uh, scrapbook paper picked out to use for this project and I was going to use some fun colored fold over elastic but Walmart didn't carry any so if you decide to do this project and you end up using something like that I would love to see what you can find and to know where you got it the, they are the, the fold over elastic is the stuff that you make those little hair bands with that you see people have on their wrists all the time. That is what that is. That's what it's, and it's made, you make headbands. It's meant for sewing to go around like, 
the legs on a leotard or a swimming suit or something like that is what it's really for. Okay, so here's the start, and you see this is just going to come right off when you want to open it. I think now that I'm looking at it, I think I would like it to be a little bit further glued onto the back. So let's do that right now. some low temperature glue. Uh, this is what my glue gun is. And I want to just take a minute to tell you about it because one of the followers here at DIY Dreaming shared yesterday some pictures oh, of a hot glue burn that she got on her finger using hot, hot glue. And I had those, they hurt like heck. Oh my goodness. So, um, so this is what I have started using. It's not a fancy glue gun. It's a Sure Bonder mini size cool shot. And it says super low temperature hot glue gun. And you get 12 little mini sticks with it. So I recommend that if you're doing very much hot gluing at all, that you get a low temperature glue gun. It's just too risky um, that you're gonna burn yourself. I mean, I get glue on my fingers all the time. I'm kind of a messy crafter, but um, ouch, her burns look terrible. It was, oh, just hurt to just look at them. Okay, so here's the front of the notebook again. I need to melt this off. Ignore the little spot where there might be a little glue on it, and you can just put whatever kind of a pin you want to use in here and keep it together or pencil, whatever you like. Okay, so let's do this stencil now and then we'll go on to the Christ and Crafting. I'm using this beautiful stencil, which I have one that's brand new also. Looks like this. It says, let me get it so that the, the light is not on it. Prayer is the key to heaven, but faith unlocks the door. And then it has a a beautiful old fashioned key and a like a lock. We're just gonna use the word prayer and we're gonna put it on sideways, okay? I do need to fuzz it because I've only used this stencil just a couple of times and I don't want it to pull up my paper, my Mod Podge stuff or anything. So I'm using a fuzzing cloth from Magnolia. Whoops. You could use a pair of jeans, a t-shirt, pair of khakis, um, a low lint tea towel, but this is just handy. And the thing about this is the inside of it is great when you're impatient and you want to dry your stencils. So I'm gonna make prayer be right across here. And I just wanna fiddle around with it a little bit. We're not doing any of the other words. Trying to decide exactly. Okay, I'm gonna say that's good. Okay, and I'm gonna have to really concentrate. We're using black top paste, which when it is all completely dry, I will go back outside, because you have to do this outside. You cannot spray this stuff in the house. It's You could get a lung injury if you do. Um, anyways, so I'll go back outside after it's completely dry and I will put, um, put one more coat of clear matte sealer over the top of it. Okay, so I'm just going to push my paste through the holes on my stencil. It's super easy. And pull off the big extra globs and I'm being careful not to go over the other words, which are nice, but they're not gonna work for this project. That's one great thing about stencils, is that you can use all or just part of them, whatever you need or want for your project. You don't have to use the whole entire stencil every time. 
Okay, and I'm gonna say good because I haven't messed anything up yet. This is what it looks like, okay? So then I'm just gonna very slowly and carefully pull this off. Maybe could have been fuzzed just a little teeny bit more, but I think we're gonna be okay. It's not stretching my stencil and I just don't want it to pull up my paper. Ha, there we go. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is really beautiful. Now I'm laying my stencil face down in a little tub of water off camera. And look at that, isn't that pretty? So for an investment of hardly anything, you could make something like this for friends, for family. You know, if you're on a tennis team, you're in a Bible study, you're part of a Girl Scout troop. Uh, I, you know, there's just so many different things you could do with this idea. But I love it. And this is classic. Um, it could be totally fun and crazy if you wanted to use some bright scrapbook paper. I'm going to throw these over here. Uh, or it could just be your basic black and white, like what I have here. So that is the project. Do you guys like it? All right, stay with me, especially if you're, you know, if you're worrying or anxious or just feeling like, my word, what else could possibly go wrong in the world? What else could I possibly worry about? If you have any of those thoughts, then stay with me. I'm not gonna pull my chair over here and sit down get my vital out. This is truly my favorite part of Christ and Crafting every week. Um, I know you guys like to come for the crafts, but I think the, the Christ part is better. Um, and that's not me, that's just Christ. But anyways, so that was our project. Started with the 50 cent composition notebook some old dictionary paper, some of this elastic, a stencil, some Mod Podge, super duper easy. Um, so like I said, when I was first starting, that, um, that if you're like me and what you feel like you're really lacking right now is peace because there's so much happening in the world and a lot of it seems not good. You know, a lot of it is way outside of the bubble of my life. You know, it's happening in other places. There's storms in other places. There's just stuff happening on the other side of the earth. So a lot of it is really outside of my bubble, but it's still weighing on me. And then there's stuff happening within my little bubble, and I bet you, you are the same. Um, so that's what we're gonna talk about, is how you can um, have prayer plus trust in God bring you peace. So let me pray and then we'll hop in the Bible. This won't be a super long, um, long Christ part. So I hope you'll stay with me to the end. Okay, Heavenly Father, oh, I thank you so much for this opportunity to share your word, to talk about peace, to talk about prayer, which is basically just how we communicate with you, Lord, and to talk about trusting in you and how all of that can make what are very difficult times just a little easier to get through and give us a better attitude, Lord. So I just want to say right now that I trust you, Lord, that you are in control that you love us, you love all of the creatures that you made, it, made all of the people everywhere, all over this earth. You love them, 
you have a good plan for them. You want everyone to come to you, Lord. You want a personal relationship with everyone. And Lord, I trust you. I don't understand what you're doing, but I'm choosing to trust in you because I know that your character is good. And uh, Lord, so I just pray as I go into the Bible that you'll give me the words that you want me to say, that they'll land with the people watching where you would like them to land. Lord, um, that this will be a help to people, this idea that I have to share during Christ and Crafting uh, during this part, and um, it'll make it a little bit easier just for all my crafty friends out there. And I thank you for the privilege of being able to read your word, to know you as my personal Lord and Savior, and to tell these people about you. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, sometimes if you have a lot on your mind, it can be helpful to write things down. Then you don't have to have it like in your mind. Um, sometimes if I have a super stressful day coming up, something that helps me get a peaceful night's sleep, <laughs> as good of a night's sleep as I ever get, which is not very good, is to write everything down because then I don't have to keep mulling it over in my mind or keep remembering. So it's the same way with our concerns, I think. And um, prayer is just our way of talking to God and telling him what our concerns are. He already knows them. He formed you. He um, knew you before the foundations of the world were laid. He loves you. He sent his son, his only son to die for you so that he could be in a personal relationship with you and he knows what your concerns are. So prayer is really not about us talking God into what we want. It's um, maybe more about us letting God know what our concerns are and in doing that, trusting him and being more at peace with it. He already knows, I promise you. He knows everything. So let's start in Philippians, which is in the New Testament, the back half of the Bible. We're going to go to chapter 4. Philippians is a pretty short book. Um, oh, and by the way, I know I say this every week, but I'm using my basic life application study Bible that I've had for over 20 years. I have scribbled my life into this book. Um, it's a new international version, life application study Bible. It has great notes that sometimes can help you just get a little bit more out of scripture. And I think it is crucial for every Christ follower to have a paper Bible, to have the Word of God in paper in front of you. So um, if you don't have a translation that speaks to you, if you don't really even have a Bible, your Bible was your great-grandmother's and it's falling apart, or whatever, um, when I get off, I'll get you a link to um, an online store. I don't make anything from this. It has absolutely nothing to do with me. But they sell life application study Bibles like this in different translations. And they're affordable and the shipping isn't terrible. And um, I just want to recommend that to you. If you don't have a paper Bible right now, Getting it on a device, your computer, your laptop, your phone, or whatever, that's great in a pinch. But you can't write your life on that, can you? And um, I'm, I'm looking through this, this part of Philippians. I just want to show you. And I'm remembering what I was praying in different seasons. And I don't want to share too much. But anyways, you can see right down here. At, in one season, I was praying something on this page. I think I was praying about what you put in your mind. 
for my son Noah. And then years later, I was praying the same thing for my son Christian. And now I'm remembering what it was. And it was just the part of Philippians that says, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. And I was just praying that for my boys. So I encourage you to get a paper Bible and to write on it. Write your life in it. Write your thoughts and your reflections. It just deepens God's word. Okay, but let's go to the, I got off track a little bit because I got excited when I saw and remembered what those were. I mean, I even dated it for Christian 2014. Um, okay, so if we go to the verses that I'm talking about, I'm going to start midstream in verse 5. And it starts saying, the Lord is near. Isn't that good to know? He is. He's not gone. The Lord is near. In fact, if you are a Christ follower, you have a piece of him in the form of the Holy Spirit inside of you, living inside of you. Um, okay, so then it's, uh, this must have been important to me because I highlighted it in pink. It says at the start of six, do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, I'm not even kidding, that's what it says. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I mean, how perfect is that? Don't be anxious. Now, that's not saying don't, don't be concerned, or, you know, or be aware. It's, I think that's a whole different level, but we're going to read the notes in just a second. But with thanksgiving, present your request to God by prayer and petition. And you can also put it on paper. This should say, well, I'm not questioning God. <laughs> the ultimate author of the Bible, but it should say by prayer and petition and on paper. Um, present your request to God by prayer and petition with thanksgiving. I can keep reading the same line over and over, sorry. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So in the notes here, um, Okay, it says, imagine never being anxious about anything. It seems like an impossibility. We all have worries on the job, in our homes, at school, in the world, with our health, with our economy, with political turmoil. I'm just adding those things to it. Um, we all have worries, but Paul's, this is the Apostle Paul who wrote this, but Paul's advice is to turn our worries into prayers. Do you want to worry less? Then pray more. Whenever you start to worry, it says in the notes, stop and pray. And then the next note is talking about God's peace. Oh my gosh, this is so good. It says God's peace is different from the world's peace. True peace is not found in positive thinking it's not found in the absence of conflict. It's not found in good feelings. It comes from knowing that God is in control. Our citizenship is in Christ. Our citizenship in Christ's kingdom is sure. Our destiny is set and we can have victory over sin. Let God's peace guard your heart against anxiety. And just recognize that true peace is not the absence of conflict. It's just recognizing that God is in control and trusting him. You have to know him to trust him, but that's what it is. Um, so that is so good. So then um, I want to go now into Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 6. Uh, 
verses 25 to 34. Matthew uh, chapter 6, 25 to 34. Okay, and this is where Jesus is teaching it about worry, and it's in red letters. And I'm just telling you, if it's in red letters, you got to take it seriously. That means it's something that Jesus said. Okay, Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, and the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds in the air. They do not sow or reap or stow away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they, the birds? Who, okay, this is, this is a, a zinger, this next part of this verse, and if we could remember it, it, it could make a huge difference. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to his life? We can't. Worrying doesn't take away our problems. It just steals our present and our presence and our peace. Okay, and then a little bit further down, Jesus says, so do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans run after these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his, God's kingdom, and his righteousness, and all things will be given to you as well. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And that's really the truth. Uh, yeah, we, we can't change things with our worry. We just need to trust. I mean, of course we can be upset. I don't like the things that are happening. I don't like the things happening in my bubble of my own life. I don't like the things happening on the other side of the earth. I don't like what's happening with this Delta variant. And neither do you. But my worry is not resolving any of that. Yeah, I can be concerned about it, but not to the point where it steals my peace, okay? Now let's go to Romans 8, 28, and then um, we'll just wrap this up and I'll be all done. And feel free to sprinkle this to your social media if you know people that you think would benefit from it. Or tell them about Christ and crafting or DIY dreaming if you would like. Okay. Eight twenty eight just says that we are more than conquerors, and we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose, and that's what it all really boils down to. We were listening to Pastor Rick Warren on church on TV this morning. And he had so many really good, really good points. Um, and one of them was, he was talking about how God is not gone. And God is still good. And sometimes when we're in the middle of something, that we need to be not necessarily asking God why, but asking God what he is trying to show you and how he wants it to change you. Because this process we're going through on earth is, it's called sanctification, which sounds like a churchy word, but we're just becoming more and more like Christ. We're still a long, 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 long ways away from that because we're, we're all human sinners, you know? But the closer we grow to God, the closer we become like his son, the more peace we have. Um, yeah, so our online church, our TV church was really good this morning. We should do our part 
and trust, and then we'll have peace. So I guess my final thoughts are that when, that, that maybe you want to make what, something like this, or just use a plain, whatever you have, any kind of paper works. It, I mean, seriously, if you have a journal, a notebook, a composition notebook, I just like to make things pretty. But um, when we start to worry, it doesn't matter whether it's something in our little bubble of our life or outside of it. Um, let's try praying to God about it first and just telling him, Lord, you know, I'm worried. I'm worried about this and this and this and this. I don't understand it. It's making me upset. It's making me question you. You can admit that to him. It's making me wonder if you're really good. It's making me doubt if you're really still in control. Whatever those feelings are, tell God that he's a big guy, he can handle it, and then write it down. And then move on. Because uh, you don't have to have that rolling around in your head forever or carry that weight on your shoulders. Pray about it, write it down, trust that God is in control and he is good and he loves you and he wants what is best for you and he has a plan. Nothing is taking him by surprise. There's no accidents. Uh, yeah, it's, this life is hard. Sometimes it really is really hard. And if you're going through something like that, I'm so terribly sorry. I know at different times, all of us have big, big ordeals, big hurdles, big hurts big concerns, big things to worry about in our lives. Um, yeah, what is God trying to show you and what is he trying to do? Yeah, if we try to look at things from his perspective and yeah, we don't have the same mind as him so that's hard to figure out but we can ask God to show us. We can ask him to help us have wisdom and to help us be able to see things the way he sees things. So I'm going to pray, but what I want to encourage you is to, I'm going to pray us out, but I want you to, I want to encourage you to pray over those concerns that you have, big and small, in your bubble and way out, whatever they are. Uh, it might be a good exercise just to sit down and to list all the things that are <sighs> heavy on your shoulders and, and tangling up your mind. Pray, tell God about it, write it down, and then trust that God is in control. And I hope, I think for me, that that will give me some more peace about everything, and I hope that it will for you too. So let me just pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you, it just isn't even... A big enough word to to say what we want to say to you thank you Lord that while we were yet sinners you sent your one and only son Jesus Christ to atone for our sins to pay for our sins uh, to to allow us to draw near to you Lord uh, he allows us to be in right standing with you now and in the future. He provided everything. So thank you, Lord, first of all, for that. Thank you that you love us so much that you would do that while we were still sinners. It's just hard to understand. Thank you, Lord, that we can trust you, that you are a good God. Lord, thank you that you have a good plan Nothing is taking you by surprise. You're in control. We can't see what your purposes are. We can't see into the future or back into the past like you can. But thank you that you are good and that we can trust you and you are in control. There's nothing happening that you're not aware of, Lord. So I just thank you for that. 
And I just pray, Lord, that um, these Bible verses that we talked about, that this idea of praying, writing it down, and trusting in you can give us peace. I thank you for that, and I really do hope that it will bring peace to a lot of people who are feeling not very peaceful right now. Lord, and I just lift up everything happening in the world in every every corner of the earth uh, everything there's so much happening right now but you know lord i i suspect that it was the same 50 years ago 100 years ago uh 500 years ago that there were we're living in a fallen world and that there were things in our bubbles then problems, obstacles, hurts, heartbreaks, and there were things outside of our bubbles in all those times too going on in the world. Um, but I just wanna lift all of that up to you. I know you're in control and you have a good plan. Help us to see what's happening around us from your perspective. Help us to see what you want us to learn. Help us to get a little glimpse into your purpose for the things that are happening, Lord. And um, I don't know all the prayer requests that everybody watching has, but you do. So I just lift all of that up to you. I lift up the prayer requests that people have told me as well as the things that they haven't voiced. You know all, all of that and you love them. And I just pray that you'll wrap your arms around those, those people, especially the people that are feeling all alone and worried and just that you'll, you'll be present, Lord. So I lift all of that up to you. Thank you, Lord, that we have your word, that we can get to know you through reading your word and through praying. And um, I just bring all of this to you. I praise you. And I pray all this in your precious son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If I can pray something for you, feel free to let me know either in the comments or if you want to send me a personal message. Um, yeah, it's, we're, it's a hard time. The future seems so very uncertain, but God isn't uncertain. So I hope this was encouraging to you. And I hope that in one way or another that you'll do this idea to pray, to uh, present your request to God, to trust that he's in control and he is good and he loves you and he has a good plan write it down, and that that will bring you some peace. All right. Have a great rest of your Sunday. I hope to see you this week here at DIY Dreaming for a lot more craft projects. Almost always my projects are focused on faith, family, or flowers. Um, they're always, almost always going to be things that are going to be quick, you don't have to be a professional crafter or a great artist to do. They're going to be affordable. They're going to afford th include things like a 50 cent composition notebook. Um, they're going to sometimes be a little different and um, they're going to be quick to complete. So if you like those kind of projects, take two seconds to see if you've liked and followed DIY Dreaming. And if your notifications are turned on up here, if you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching on YouTube, take two seconds to subscribe to my channel. Um, if you're watching on Facebook and you want to improve your odds <laughs> of actually seeing what I have coming up this week, do it this or this or say something in the comments and check your notifications and that those things all in combination do seem to improve your chance that I will actually pop up in your newsfeed. Alrighty, you guys have a blessed rest of your day and I'll see you soon.
I'm going to just put this one notebook right here. Or actually, I think I'll just hold it up in case you want to take a screenshot. And I'm going to say goodbye. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. Um, hope that you decide to do a notebook. I'd love to see what you come up with if you decide to do something. And yeah. Which Bible or Bible study do I use? Okay, let me answer one more question and then I really will say goodbye. Okay, I have a Life Application Study Bible in New International Version. I'm gonna drop a link at the, on the very first comment and also in the description that tells you where you can go if you want to order one online. They're affordable, they're not fancy. And you can choose the translation that you want. And I don't make anything on that just to be completely transparent with you. It's, I just want you to have a Bible. Um, so that's what I use. And then there's a ton of different Bible studies out there. In fact, I'm so excited because the Bible study I am in is a, a non-denominational Bible study that's straight Bible reading. Uh, and then you answer questions, and it's called Community Bible Study, but there's lots of different programs out there. Um, that one is called CBS, which is an abbreviation for Community Bible Study, and we start on Wednesday, September 1st, so I'm super excited to get started again. Um, anyways, you can find all kinds of different Bible studies out there, uh, written things, um, online, in person, and if you're asking about that, if there's a little tug in your heart that maybe you want to get into a Bible study, then go for it. You'll be so glad you did. Alrighty. Have a great day, everyone. I'll see you later.